What's up everyone, welcome to Film Spot, and today we will be talking about the best upcoming movies. I won't lie, the highly anticipated sequel to 2021's Mortal Kombat is shaping up to be an utter smash hit with this exciting casting news because it looks like Carl Urban is in final talks to play the iconic Johnny Cage. Urban, known for his impressive roles in Thor Ragnarok, The Boys, Star Trek, and Dread, is set to bring his undeniable talent to the upcoming film, which is scheduled to start shooting this summer in his home country of Australia. If you're a fan of the series, you'll recall that Johnny Cage was teased in the post credit scene of the first Mortal Kombat film, and now with Urban potentially taking on the role, it's got us all wondering if he can pull off Cage's signature split punch. With a healthy dose of Hollywood smarm and a goofy demeanor, Urban definitely has the chops to do this character justice. But what about the other characters? Jin Han and Joe Taslim are set to return as Shang Tsung and Sub-Zero Bi Han, respectively. But who else will join the fray? We'll have to wait and see. We do know that plenty of combatants met their demise in the first film, but in the Mortal Kombat universe, death is rarely an obstacle. We are going to enter the neon-lit world of Alita once again, because the much-awaited sequel is finally on the horizon. That's right, fans of the 2019 cyberpunk action flick, Alita Battle Angel, will be thrilled to hear that the project's director and lead star are currently in talks to bring you the long-awaited follow-up. So there's no release date as of now. Producer John Landau spilled the beans on the sequel's development, and it seems that a good portion of the credit goes to Avatar The Way of Water, the upcoming Avatar sequel. Landau shared that the intricate facial expressions and nuances that they learned while working on the Avatar sequel will be instrumental in bringing the emotional and humanoid Alita to life once again. The best part? The same creative team and cast that brought us the first Alita movie are expected to return for the sequel, ensuring a seamless transition as the franchise moves from Fox to Disney. The greatly anticipated sequel to the 2018 animated superhero hit Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is swinging into theaters with a whopping runtime of 2 hours and 20 minutes, making it the longest major animated film ever made by a Hollywood studio. That's right, it beats out the previous record holder, 2012's Consuming Spirits, by a full four minutes. But hey, long movies are all the rage these days, right? From Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3 to John Wick Chapter 4, and even upcoming flicks like Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny and Martin Scorsese's Killers of the Flower Moon, it seems like we just can't get enough of those hefty runtimes. One reason for Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse's length could be its all-star cast featuring Shameik Moore as Miles Morales and a host of other A-listers playing different versions of spider heroes from alternate universes. And while it's a bummer that Nicolas Cage won't be reprising his role as Spider-Man Noir, with a cast like this, I think we are still in for a wild ride. This is not a drill. Bugs Bunny is back, baby! Warner Brothers has hired writer Robert Rugen to work on a new live-action and animation hybrid movie featuring everyone's favorite Looney Tunes character. While the studio hasn't made an official announcement yet, I for one am already buzzing about what everyone's favorite bunny will be up to in this modern-day adventure. Bugs has been hopping through pop culture for almost a century, starring in countless cartoons and films since his debut in 1938. His most recent big screen appearance was in Space Jam A New Legacy, where he and the rest of the Looney Tunes helped LeBron James win a basketball game and reconcile with his son. But Bugs has also teamed up with other big name stars like Brendan Fraser in Looney Tunes Back in Action, where he had to rescue Daffy Duck from Hollywood executives who wanted to make him a star on his own. I can't wait to see what this movie is going to bring to the table. Ladies and gentlemen, the impossible has been accomplished. The much-awaited summer blockbuster Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 has officially wrapped production. Director Christopher McQuarrie took to Instagram to break the news, thanking his incredible crew for all their hard work in bringing the epic film to life. As we eagerly await the July 12, 2023 release, McQuarrie has already hinted at the second part of the story, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 2, which is set to hit theaters on June 28, 2024. The film has certainly had a rocky road to production, with multiple delays due to the pandemic and scheduling conflicts. But with Cruise's recent box office success in Top Gun Maverick, we have no doubt that Dead Reckoning Part 1 will be a massive hit. 
And for those lucky enough to attend CinemaCon 2023, Paramount teased 20 minutes of footage from the film, sending fans into a frenzy. So mark your calendars, folks. July 12th, 2023 is the day we finally get to witness the thrilling first part of this two-part, seemingly impossible, but always possible story. I'm not kidding. Middle Earth is about to make a triumphant return to the big screen. That's right, Lord of the Rings fans. It is time for all of us to once again make our way to the cinema in hordes for the Lord of the Rings War of the Rohirrim. This highly anticipated anime film, that's right, it won't be live action, promises to take us on a journey to the kingdom of Rohan and introduce us to a host of lesser known characters from J.R.R. Tolkien's beloved universe. But don't worry, this isn't some hastily thrown together production hoping to cash in on the current Middle Earth renaissance. New Line Cinema, Warner Brothers Animation, and Sola Entertainment are combining their expertise to produce a visually stunning film that will still take its cues from Peter Jackson's iconic trilogy. Plus, the legendary token illustrators Alan Lee and John Howe are involved, ensuring that the new film stays true to the heart of the source material. As for the cast, we've already got some exciting names confirmed, including Miranda Otto returning to her role as the fierce Eowyn and Brian Cox stepping into the role of the legendary king of Rohan, Helm Hammerhand. And while we'll have to wait a bit longer for the official trailer, we'll get a first look at the movie in June at the Annecy Film Festival. So set the date, April 12th, 2024, because Middle Earth is calling. We all know at this point that Ryan Reynolds is set to reprise his role as the wise-cracking, fourth-wall-breaking superhero in Deadpool 3, and that he'll be joined by a slew of returning actors and some exciting new faces. But wait, there's more! According to Deadline, Rob Delaney will be back as Peter, the only human member of X-Force, the superhero squad that met a grisly fate in the last film. You remember Peter, right? The ordinary guy who answered Deadpool's Craigslist ad and ended up getting melted by Zeitgeist's acid vomit? <laughs> yeah, that guy. The addition of Delaney to the cast suggests that we can expect even more returning characters than we initially thought. Along with Reynolds and Delaney, Marina Baccarin, Karin Sony, Leslie Uggams, Stefan Kapishik, and Hugh Jackman have all been confirmed to reprise their roles. And newcomers Emma Corrin and Matthew McFadden are also set to join the fray. But don't get too excited just yet, folks. We still have over a year to wait before we get to see Deadpool and the gang back in action. The film isn't slated for release until November 8, 2024. So sit tight, keep your eyes peeled for more news, and remember, with Deadpool, anything can happen. Whenever we see a giant monster movie, we just want to keep seeing it, don't we? The same was the case with the Cloverfield monster, which was a part of the Cloverfield Experiment franchise, which began with the 2008 found footage monster movie, has included various spin-offs and entries, including 2016's 10 Cloverfield Lane and 2018's The Cloverfield Paradox. The in-universe slush show website has officially reopened this week, according to our pals at Slash Film, hinting that the viral advertising campaign for Cloverfield 2 is starting to take shape. Slusho is a made-up beverage in the Cloverfield universe, and the website was a part of the grand ARG campaign for the first film. The business asserts that the addition of the seabed's nectar also significantly improves its health. The component was allegedly discovered on the deep ocean floor under amazing pressure and extreme cold, according to the history section of the official Slusho website. Creating these flavor combinations is the only thing you can currently do on the website, but we believe this is just the beginning of the Cloverfield Saga's viral comeback. The Cloverfield Paradox explains that a rupture in the space-time continuum poured all kinds of creatures out into all kinds of other timelines in the Cloverfield Paradox, but the Cloverfield sequels up to this point have effectively been unconnected films with vague links to filmmaker Matt Reeves' 2008 film. Ready to cheat death once again? The Final Destination franchise is back, and it's about to give you another round of heart-pumping Rube Goldbergian deaths that will make you think twice before leaving your house. In case you need a refresher, Final Destination follows a group of young people who cheat death after one of them has a premonition of a fatal event. But death, being the vengeful entity that it is, starts to come for them one by one in the most gruesome and creative ways possible. And now, after years of waiting, Final Destination 6 is officially in the works. 
Though we don't have an official release date yet, we do know that Zach Lepofsky and Adam B. Stein, the duo behind 2018's Freaks, will be directing the sequel. Plus, Craig Perry is back as a producer, and he's hinted that the film may focus on first responders dealing with life and death situations every day. As for the cast, nothing has been confirmed yet, but original stars Devin Sawa and Tony Todd have expressed interest in returning. So will they make a comeback? Only time will tell. One thing's for sure though, if you're a fan of Final Destination's trademark blend of horror, you're gonna be excited about this one. Fans and insiders alike are itching to know who Marvel will cast as the beloved members of the first family of the MCU. And it seems like every day there's a new casting rumor flying around. And I'm in on all of them. Mila Kunis was recently spotted at a deli with the film's director, Matt Shackman, leading to wild speculation that she'd be playing a female version of Ben Grimm, aka The Thing. But Kunis was quick to deny these rumors, leaving fans wondering who could possibly fill the big rocky shoes of the Fantastic Four's resident bruiser. But wait, there's more. Did you know that there's already been a female version of The Thing? Meet Darla Deering, a former girlfriend of Johnny Storm, aka the Human Torch, who joined the team in a replacement Fantastic Four lineup. Darla wears Thing rings that, when combined, create the Thing exoskeleton, a supersuit with crazy strength and durability. Could this be a hint at what's to come for the Fantastic Four? And what about those other casting rumors? Adam Driver as Reed Richards, Margot Robbie as Sue Storm, Paul Mescal as Johnny Storm, Antonio Banderas as Galactus. The possibilities are endless. We gotta keep our eyes peeled for this one, because this film keeps overflowing with speculation before its 14th of February 2025 release date. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.